Rolling Thunder, this is Hitman, Seattle, over. Hitman, this is Rolling Thunder, Seattle, out. Green to suppress, Mike Charlie, 435, Niner 21. Green to mark, Mike Charlie. All right, well, hello and welcome to another editing video for Almost 3. Um, it's been a while since I made an editing video in the first place. Most has only been uh, gameplay uh, straight off. Basically, I've had a lot of comments uh, on this video I made for Armor 2, which is C130 drop, and uh, some human record into that too. Um, but I'm not going to cover that in Armor 3, I'm just going to cover how to get the C130 to drop you guys in, and yeah, that's it. So basically, it's, it's a simple situation here, which is the start of lots of planes. I'm the player right now, I'm in a team of paratroopers, remember, if you don't want to use paratroopers, make sure that you add the backpacks for them to, you know, power up in. Otherwise, you know, they're going to drop to the ground. Uh, they won't die, but they'll get stuck. Uh, this is because I'm, I'm doing some safety checks to ensure that this drop actually does happen. So right now, I do have a, um, a group um the, the leader this is the and it's for the leader of this group that's in the helicopter and basically it only does one thing and it's moving all the guys into the plane that i wanted to which is this plane and this plane's in it is named name of plane this flying height ensures that it flies on 400 i also ensure that it spawns at 400 by putting that in i set this behavior to careless because i don't want it to react to fire uh, his waypoints are a straight line, again careless, uh, no need for that, because I put it in the init, you can do that as well, you don't have to do the init, um, and this waypoint, it's just a waypoint for the infantry, you don't have to get uh, use any get out waypoints or anything, everything is automatic. So uh, basically, this is the interesting part, the trigger. So for starters, ejecting, this is just a variable name, this is what it's going to be recognized as, you can name it shit if you want to you don't have to name it and it doesn't matter what you do it could be lo it could be local as well no matter this is what's important this line here this is the first array being sent into the script this means that it's the first baggage of information that you send into the script and the script is going to transform that into your whatever the fuck you want anyway name of plane xx vm um eject sqf right I'm also basically pressed F2, and if I drag F2 and hold it, I should get a line, and this this line is going to be connected with the helicopter or the plane, and then you'll get a oh no I fucked it up, so I'll just redrag it. I'll drag it from the plane to the trigger. You can do vice versa. That means that this trigger is now connected to this plane, and if this plane gets into this area, it's going to activate. Because it's as vehicle. You also have whole group, group leader, and any group member choices uh, for the specific group that I spot, uh, selected. So as soon as it crosses over here, um, basically um, the units are going to start ejecting uh, fairly quickly. It's going to be a static line. However, they use uh, free falling uh, parachutes. So basically, they they they'll take their time before they start actually deploying. Um, but basically, um, it's pretty a simple script. What I'm going to do right now, which is what people asked before, is well, how do you do more than just one plane? And then for this script, I'm going to tell you. So I'm, I'm going to place a shitload of them. It's going to hopefully not lag, but um, it's going to look fucking cool. Uh, this is probably way too close, but uh, I want it to be a little bit close because it's, it's going to look awesome. So again, I've got a shit. I've just copied everything now, even the triggers, even the waypoints. Everything's fine, and uh, this is exactly what it's going to look like for starters. Um, but we'll, move, we'll start with this. Uh, so that since the init has changed, the name of the plane for this group has changed. You obviously have to go into the script and change it. See, name of plane underscore one, and the same thing for that, and same here. So I basically have to check that, make sure that it's the right name, otherwise it won't work. This is something you'll notice, if it doesn't work, something is wrong. This will work, if you're not doing it right, it's not going to work. So, last plane, named 05, or oh, underscore 5. The 
I f fucked up. No, all right. Five planes. Five drop zones. And again, trigger needs to be changed. This is annoying though. Now I have to check which one it's connected to. <laughs> uh, not good. So this is number four. I'm gonna move it off and see. Number five, definitely. Number three, yes. All right, this is <laughs> painful task but uh, since people asked for it before I'm gonna just make sure that I cover that uh, name too All right here we go except for this one not this one I'll just go one well I wanted to drop it more or less at the same area so I'm gonna pull them all at the same spot Hopefully they will trigger and, you know, they won't panic fly and just gonna separate, which AI will do. So I'm going to actually separate them a little bit more, just to be sure. Right, so before we test this and I show it off to you, um, I'm basically going to... Um, um, I guess I'll start off with showing you the script and how it actually works. It's very, very simple. I'll be able to fit this into the description itself. It's simple as fuck. Right. Sorry about the swearing, I just have to, because I have to get this sorted quickly, because, um, yeah, it's, it's a waste of my time. <laughs> um, I usually don't make editing videos anymore. I might have to help, uh, help you guys uh, get situated with the editing, but regardless, let's go out of the editor. Um, in your mission folder, where you put all your scripts, this is basic stuff. If you don't know this stuff, I'm not sure where you, go, where you should go to learn. Uh, but it's in the missions, usually in the documents, Arm 3, other profiles, whichever, missions, mission folder. Usually ends with adult, adult altus or stratus. Anyway, you go there. Right, so I'm back outside the editor, and basically we have, I've made two scripts. Um, to make a script again, you go into new text document. This is what it says in Swedish. Um, you double click. This is what it says, my, my others, my previous shit, whatever. You don't have to actually type anything in there. Save as, uh, that's what it says. Control S, you can see that's uh, not the save function, but to save as. Press that, or oh, you'll get a, pro usually you'll get your mission folder straight away, so you don't have to do anything special. Now, these are the important things. First of all, name the fucking script. Script name, done. Name for it. Now we have to set what it is. It's um, SQS, EXT, SQF, don't know. Scripting is usually SQF, right? So SQF. Not done yet. If I save this right now, I get a text document. You see? Actually, no, it didn't do that anymore. That's nice. Fucking awesome. I thought there was a problem with that. Because uh, before I had to actually switch to all files right there. Uh, but it seems you don't have to anymore, so uh, fucking good. Cheerio. Uh, script name, remove that. So the first script that I've made is the eject one. That's the one triggered inside the trigger um, when the header plane itself passes over. So let's take a look at it. See, it's simple. It's very simple. It's hard to fuck this up. Um, but I had to make two scripts just to be sure, because I noticed some errors. So, well, the first thing. Uh, what what it does first. First of all, you remember that you sent information in the array of the trigger, right? It said name of plane, the names of all the planes. That's the information you send to the script. And I only send one piece of information, which means that this is uh, number zero, the information number zero. And that's exactly what this does. So I'm defining plane, which is now from now on underscore plane and equals, obviously, stand for equals. Um, this select zero. Basically, it uh, launch or it takes the information that's been sent with the uh, with the script or the command uh, to run the script, and uh, basically it just changes the name for it. You could use uh, this select zero and just uh, you know ignore everything else. Maybe put that there. Um, so I could replace this with probably putting it this select zero, but I don't like doing that because that. Um, that's um, I could work for this small script, but from future reference, totally not worth it. Define your shit. 
Anyway, um, so basically I'm doing a for each command for assigned cargo in the plane. What that means is that this is going to run this is going to run for each of the members that is assigned as cargo in this plane. That means everyone in the back, right? And I've already made my squad leaders make sure that all the group members are inside each vehicle. They're not in the driver's seat, they're not in co-pilot, they're in the back seat. And also this C-130 that I'm using is a, is a mod, it's not in the game itself, sadly. You can use this with helicopters, however. So, if you don't have enough supplies for an add-on, then you can do helicopters, no problem. So, first things first, what I've noticed is that the, um, the AI and yourself can take damage while in flight and jumping out. What I've done for that is I allow damage falls for a short duration. So I allow damage falls, which means you can't take any damage. I also, very important, unassign the vehicle for the guy jumping out. If you don't do this, if you miss this, the C-130 is going to be like, oh shit, I lost a guy, he's, he's jumped out. So I'm going to turn around and try and land and you know try and pick him up. No, don't do that. Don't miss that out. Uh, as soon as you've done that, you've unassigned him. He's not part of the vehicle anymore. Next jump. So underscore X action eject. Same as eject action you've got when you sit in the back seat. Um, it launches that, uh, the eject, and from vehicle X. Underscore X is by the way every unit. It's basically a a reference to uh, to the units that's been checked in for each side car. So uh, basically, it's it's gonna be for each of them. Um, it's like saying the name of the unit, except, you know, it's generic, so it's going to be for everyone. Regardless. So, it checks the vehicle underscore X before I put in a very stupid mistake that I didn't notice, like, after for you know, years. <laughs> um, it's in the script that I sent with you. It's, I actually put the name of the plane like that. No. Don't do that. It's a lot easier to make a generic script that basically needs one piece of information and then just you use the hell out of that information rather than just filling in gaps with stupid names and stuff. Um, right, so after that, it's going to sleep 0 0.8 seconds. And I think that's a good idea. And then after that few seconds, the uh, damage is going to be re-allowed again. I don't need this. This is unnecessary right now. Because uh, I've also created a check script. And this is the same thing, you're sending one piece of information, but this time it's the single person that's jumping out, right? Again, local variable, no need, can be named whatever you want. Name of the script needs to be exact. Right, so, runs all this for each of the members jumping out of the planes for each assigned cargo plane. So, for each of the persons assigned in the cargo, this can run. This is pretty simple, this is done, we're completely done. I don't know if there's any more questions to it. I think I've explained everything. Right, get out of eject. Let's go to check. So this is what I did. Um, God damn, it's full of text. Right. Oh, now you old people can see shit too. So, again, we are dis defining first selection, which was underscore X, so every person in the play. So, this is an, an, a thing that I don't have to use because, you know, it's usually you're above 50 meters when you take off. But basically, if the position of the unit is, or in altitude, is above 50, then allow damage falls. So, don't take any goddamn damage. And wait until you are, again, position of the unit is, or in altitude, is less than one. Basically, hitting the deck. Sleep for five seconds, let any bugs or anything, you know, the parachute not closing or anything like that. Wait for that, and then you allow the damage again. This could be a problem, because if you take fire when you're on the deck, on the start, uh, or if the enemy AI, uh, you're obviously going to uh, overpower them with invincibility. Regardless, this is something you do not have to use for multiplayer. If you need this for multiplayer to steer your parachute to get to the ground safely, you're an idiot. Um, this is strictly for AI. AI is stupid as fuck. They will die landing on the ground. I noticed that. I lost at least 50% of my team in the first jump. And this solved it. So, let's give it a try. 
Also, I had to remove this check thing if completely. Again, just remove that and you're fine. Okay. Hopefully there shouldn't be any more questions. Let's jump in once okay. in the game. We press preview. Actually, I forgot to do something, which uh, I don't really care about. But uh, let's hit it. I don't have any sound, I think. Uh, right now I've fucked up my speakers and shit, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, I think this is fuller fuller pages C130. I'm not sure. I'm not in charge of this. So you can see a lot of a lot of goddamn planes. That guy's going off somewhere. I think the waypoint's a bit off. Um my fault again. But it seems to look fairly nice. We're coming across the town right now. And you can see that they're starting to drop. And I'm dropping too. And you can see that some small pixels there are also dropping. I'm also gonna open my parachute just in case here. And I'm gonna slow down drastically. And you can see a massive static. Okay, it's not a static line, but it's a you know, fucked up one. Maybe it's the Mexican military or something doing a little bit of practice. So, uh, a little bit of near collision here. Let's do it. Oh. Anyway, um, we're going to get to the ground and we'll just see if any of these blips uh, actually you know, disappear. That means, obviously, that they're dead. And, obviously, I ran the ground hard. No problem for me, because I'm one of the AI right now. And you can see all of them dropping in. I'm thinking world of in conflict right now. But yeah, here we go. Lots of people dropped in. These uh, hexagons are not disappearing, which means that all of them are alive. And I can see a lot of running around. Um, so basically, as soon as they've landed, I put a waypoint, a move waypoint for all the infantry. So all, what they'll do is basically run over there. If you want them to move on to the next objective or explode shit, you can do that too. Anyway, that's all for this video. That's shown everything that you need to know to make the C-130 or helicopter drop paratroopers. If you have any questions, please post a comment and good luck. This is not tested for multiplayer. This is uh, strictly AI, really. Uh, I'm not even testing that in dedicated either. So uh, I wouldn't expect it to work everywhere. But if it does work for your single player, hats off. Good fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If it did help you, please do like because it does help me uh, to boost my ego. Um, it doesn't give me any money, so don't, worry, don't get worried about that. Anyway, cheers. 44 meters. Uh, right side of the road on the left side. Negative. Keep bringing it right. Right. Yeah, that's more or less on target.